गुड मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू लर्न अबाउट टेरिडोस्पम एंड बेनी डिटेल एंड जूसपम ओरिजिन थेरी सो द टेरिडोस्पर्म्स आर ऑल्सो नोन एज साइकेडोफिलिकेल्स और सीड फंस दे आर ऑल्सो कॉल्ड because of plant shows fern like leaves and some of them bears leaves associated with associated with cycads like stem showing difference in stem anatomy with ferns and they bears true seeds so what what is mean by that these pteridospermal members shows interrelationship with angiospermic plants within that pteridospermals act as a connecting link between ferns and typical cycadophytes including fossil cycads as well as present day cycads and also the angiospermic plants and they share similar characteristic with pteridophytes that is a ferns then they show some similarities that that similarities are large pinnately compound leaves dichotomously branched lateral veins leaves with circinate venation some genera with protostyl some genera with polystyls xylem are mesarch leaf traces mesarch presence of multiple leaf traces xylem without vessels and phloem and in few forms porangia aggregated to synangia then microspore are minute and they are motile flagellated or uh, motile or flagellated so in this way they shows many more different characteristic which can resembles them with a angiospermic plants and they were reported evidently from upper devonian to pre men of paleozoic era or age plants are often monoecious but micro and megasporophyll are not arranged in definite strobili so they are based on above characteristic of stem leaf seeds they are considered as a probable ancestors of benetitels also we have various evidence and interpretation discuss the possibility of cycadels benetitels and any other gymnosperm to be the ancestor of angiosperm so what happened pteridospermans also supports these theories um, they are ancestor of a angiospermic plant then therefore emphasis was given to the pteridosperms as the possible ancestor and likewise conquest in 1968 stated that it is a long way morphologically from any known seed ferns to an angiosperm but each of the differences could logically be bridged in the course of evolution means what the pteridosperms are also resembles as uh, seed ferns and they are also resembling with some cycads means gymnospermic plants so right from pteridosperm to the cycads and again they are also inter related with angiosperm so in this way the pteridosperms are becomes a ancestor ancestor of angiosperm so how they are ancestors the angiosperm shows double fertilization with triploid endosperm and possibly due to the reduction of female gametophyte so likewise sepals originate from leaves and petals from both sepals and stamens so these diagrams here are 
these diagrams which can also shows a minute differences in between sepal stamens then thus the evolution of an angiospermic flower can be traced from cones and cone like structure of gymnosperm so here is that these are the strobulus cone like structures all of these a cone like structure which can also resembles them with gymnospermic plant and with angiospermic plants furthermore the primitive angiosperm like magnolia lacks presence of vessels so the pteridospermal plants also shows lack of vessels in secondary in in that plants so in case of magnolia the secondary ooze shows absence of vessel as well as the seed ferns which are also called as pteridosperm they are also without a vessels so thus the angiosperm could have evolved from a pteridospermous ancestry then melville in 1960 stated that the reproductive branch of glossopteridians means pteridosperms is somewhat complete with the present day angiosperm and that's why they are the ancestor of angiosperm so here is all the diagrams especially this a is a leaf of reproductive body of hirsutum then this b is nothing but an a part of leaf of glossopteris showing a pattern of venation then c is nothing but an a fertile leaf of legionopteria then d is the front of a lepidopteris e is the seed these are the seeds bearing structure of peltospermum and f is nothing but an acupulated disc of cones then g is the microsporophyll and and likewise all these are the different structures which can found the shows the ancestry with pteridosperm with angiosperms so then the external similarities of benedictals with angiosperm can also be explained in terms of common ancestry of both these groups in the pteridosperm so in this way the taktajan in 1969 stated that angiosperm arose from some very asian group of gymnosperm means angiosperm are arise from some asian group of gymnosperm which must have primitive secondary xylem of scalary from trachytes at least in the early oon and primitive bisexual strobili then the strobili must have been of a type that could have diverse to give rise to the primitive benedictalian strobilus and the primitive angiosperm flower so in this way they can also resemble with other body parts of a plant body of a angiospermic plant body it may be a leaf flower or branching pattern and seeds so these are the few diagrammatic representation which can shows how the pteridophytes as well as gymnospermic plants are modified into a angiospermic plants so this is the complete plant body of a glossiopteris
which is a which shows the complete morphology as like a angiospermic plant and this is a single leaf of a glaciopteris and here are the some common reproductive structures associated with glossiopteris which can shows different type of organs which are found in glossiopteris and they also shows interrelationship with angiospermic plant then next one that is a benedictinian theory according to saporta and marion in 1885 and herber and perkin in 18 in 1907 the benedictines of gymnosperm is the possible ancestor of angiosperm they consider as benedictinian as the possible ancestor of angiosperm due to the similarities between strobili of cycadioidea and mesozygenus and the flower of magnolia means what in 1885 support and marian and herber and perkin in 1907 they support they find out the interrelationship in between seed forms cycadioidea and magnolia magnolia is a angiospermic plant cycadioidea is a gymnospermic plant and some seed forms with and some other benedictinian plants can give rise can give a same ancestor for a angiospermic plants so here are some similarities both the structures means strobila and flower are bisexual having an elongated central axis so today we have a uh, many more Uh, flowering plants and they possesses a flower so that flower is also resemble with a strobila of a benedictinian plants or cycadioidea and as like a primitive plant of a angiosperm that is a magnolia for example magnolia champaca so what happen in this way the cycadioidea the different parts like bract microsporophyll megasporophyll are arranged from the bottom towards the apex while in magnolia perian stamens and carpels are arranged in a similar way so that's why the flower of magnolia is showing interrelationship or same arrangement of a floral member as like a perian stamen carpel can form a flower and within a strobila of a cycadioidea there is a presence of bracts microsporophyll and megasporophyll which can combine to form a strobila so in this way both can both shows a strobila which is as like a flower in case of a benedictinian theory which can support the same ancestry or a phylogenetic arrangement then in spite of the above superficial similarities both the group shows much differences by detail investigation then some differences are also found within a benedictinian members and angiospermic plants so in case of a stem when we are we are observing stem at that time benedictinian stem have a thick cortex a comparatively thin vascular cylinder and a large pit but the angiospermic plant have thin cortex thick vascular cylinder and a small pit so these are the some differences then microsporophyll means a stamens 
In Benedictinian members, the microsporophyll are arranged in horal and mostly connect with each other. But in case of Magnolia, which is the member of angiospermic plant, they show stamens are free and spirally arranged on the axis. Then next one, Megasporophyll, which is also called as a carpel in case of a flower. And in case of a strobili, we can, we can call them as a megasporophyll. So, in Benedictalians, the megasporophyll are greatly reduced, having a simple stalk on which a single terminal ovule is present. But beside that, interseminal scales, which are sterile scales, are present in between megasporophyll for the protection purpose but in flower of magnolia does not show such structure beside that there is a presence of perianth then next one that is a micropylar tube which is present inside the ovule micropylar tube is present in penny details but such structure is unknown in angiosperms Then the seeds which are found in Benedictus are exalbuminous and that is non-endospermic having a large embryo but the seeds of primitive angiosperm are albuminous that is endospermic and with a small embryo means what happened in case of Benedictalian the embryo is large and without any covering if the embryo possesses outer outermost covering it becomes a seed so the benedictalian are a primitive plants and they are without a seeds that's why there is a absence of a seed coat in case of a embryo while in case of a primitive angiosperm there is a presence of a small embryo surrounded by the endosperms and that complete embryo and endosperms again enclosed within a seed coat so that is the complete seed of angiosperm by such type of arrangement could not be present in benedictalian seeds the above fact shows that Benedictalian is not in a position to be considered as the ancestor of angiosperm but both the group shows much differences than the similarities and the above similarities may also result due to the common ancestry or a parallel evolution. So, the what is meant by common ancestry or parallel evolution? Common ancestry means a same plant which is a first land plant developed in a pteridophytes. Then they are get evolved or modified as a gymnosperms and that gymnospermic plants also get modified or evolved into a angiosperms. So that is the common ancestry and the parallel evolution. So according to Arbor and Perkin, in 1907, both the groups have a common origin from seed ferns and they might have diverged very early. Then the taxonomist Taktajan in 1980s mentioned in his classification that magnoliophyta are regarded to be monophyletic in origin and most probably derived from benedictalian like ancestor or stock ancestral to them means what taktajan in 1980s he mentioned he, he within his classification system that is magnoliophyta possesses a monophyletic origin which is coming from Benedictalian ancestor and that correlate 
that can modify themselves into a angiospermic plant and that is the correlation in between benedictalian and angiospermic magnoliophyta means a magnolia genus magnolia so in this way they can shows a different and they can shows a way in which they can modified they can uh, evolve and later on there is a development of such highly developed seed and flower bearing plants called as a angiospermic plants so here are some diagrammatic representation of a benedictalian reproductive structure so this one is a Williamsonia bisexual reproductive structure that is a microsporophyll with microsporangia so these are the outer bract these are the ovulated receptacle and these are the microsporophyll then this is a ovule receptacle this is a whitish part these are the bracts and these are the microsporophylls this is the pollen bearing structure called as a microsporophyll showing a attached synangia in this way this is a hypothetical arrangement of angiospermis trobilus and this is the proanthro trobilus of a benedictalian plants which is also a ancestor of a angiosperm plant then here is the construction of williamsonia plant which is which can shows a same characteristic as like a angiosperm plants so i hope you will understand whatever Uh, there are many more plants which are having a common common ancestry that is a first land plant which can develop on a soil and develops the first trachid within a stem so that's why they are common ancestor that's why the pteridosperm are the common ancestor for the gymnospermic plant as well as angiospermic plant within today's lecture we are just concentrate on angiospermic plants how the angiospermic plants are get evolved or modified from a first land plant that is a pteridophytes and that can correlated with angiospermic plant so in this way you will get a complete idea about a how the benedictals and pteridospermans are becomes a common ancestry for a angiospermic plant so thank you thank you so much